it's perfect because it does. It, it starts from the beginning. You know, you have a sales concept. This is my sales concept. I'm doing mortgage. Okay, that sounds good. That's what I'm going to pick. Now, where do I find these people at? Not just like one idea. It's like a three-prong approach of different uh, uh, marketing kits, et cetera, that I'm about to, the targeting prospecting system I'm about to pass out. So they will literally be able to go from A to Z. Hey, this is where I find the names. This is how I approach them. Once I approach them, I take them. This is the tools that I use. So, I, And to give you an example, I, I had an agent that was making, I started in Columbus and Dan can contest and actually Mr. Pendridge can too, that, that come in and he was actually, I think his check was low, it was like $38 uh, a week. Anybody got any of them? Well, he come in, <laughs> no, he started this process and he, he now has in the last uh, seven, eight weeks about $23,000 in PPC pending from the TPS basically. So, yeah. Hi. Um, you said something about having that fact finder if the client during the fact finding wanted to, to decline and mm -hmm. actually make a signature somewhere. Yeah. Where, where is that found? What should they sign? And of course, if you've got repeat offenders on uh, initial fact finding, what was your solution? So you, um, what we've done is you have a page and actually you'll get these with the rollout. You may get an example today. I'm not sure. Uh, but you will get this with the rollout next week. And it's a one pager uh, that they will sign. Now, I have some agents, and, and that's the thing, you're, you're, we are initiating change. And you, but you're going to have people that are going to say, I'm not doing that fact finder, my piece of paper is perfect, you know, I'll just have them sign this every single time. Well, I talked about two different types of leadership. If you would sit down as sales managers, district sales managers, and take them through these fact finders, because you know why they don't want to use them, really, deep down? They don't know how to. So how much time have you spent with them saying, okay, listen, this is what we do. And that's great. You're getting them signed. You're compliant. You know, you're going through the motion. But either, you want to coach them into this is the way we do this. Matter of fact, let me go on a call for you. Watch me do it. And then they're going to see that, guys, and they're going to get more comf comfortable, right? When they're comfortable, they're confident. When they're confident, they're going to use them. So I would try the coaching method if you got somebody that's a repeat offender. What was the biggest pushback that you got from any of your agents, and how did you specifically deal with it? I tell you what, the biggest one we had was phone, phone sessions, because for some reason, um, and, and I wouldn't say it was a big pushback, guys, because you're going to get pushback at how you roll this out. The way you own it is going to depend on how much pushback that you actually get. But if you're asking me, I would say phone sessions. You know, you ever go to a phone session and it's just dead, and you got, you know, George, he's over there looking on spirit because he wants to find all the clients that got stuff in their ULs that he can get them to cash in, and then the uh, six months down the road, I mean, you can name it all day long, right? So I, I, I thought about this, and I was thinking, here we are, we got people thumbing through paper, they don't want to do this, it's boring, they're just sitting there. Well, the biggest thing about phone sessions is you've got to be positive. There's got to be some energy. Gene talked earlier, and Mr. Dunn talked too. I play music, and I would recommend this in every single district. I got some music, some Rocky. If you don't get pumped up to Rocky, something's wrong. First off, so I got some Rocky and I blast it for five minutes before the phone session. And at first they're all kind of looking around. And even when I was a sales manager, they all kind of looking around like I was crazy. And I am a little bit, you can tell. But <laughs> I played that music and then I cut it off. And then we kicked off the phone session because no longer will be, all right guys, phone session, we got to, you know, dial for an hour and I'm going to be in my office uh, making recruiting dials. Um, there will be no more of that. Now you're kicking it off. You've got a 10, 15 minute, you're playing music, you're going over, you're up on the board, you're getting them involved. How many appointments you have? How many closings? What's your dial objective? How many appointments do you want to make? And you go around the room and you're asking everybody. And it's fun. You've got to make it fun. And at first they all looked like I was crazy, but before the end result, we had people coming into the back room dancing. Greg, you remember Nancy, she was dancing. Wasn't pretty, but she was dancing in the back, you know. <laughs> So it was actually fun, and guess what happened? People got out, that energy fed on, and they got on the phones, and they were dialing, and we made sure they had list prepared. A list, not a let's go and do term conversions, let's do the alpha list. That, that bothers me, but let's pull out our alpha list, call everybody. No, we had list prepared of individuals we were calling, and we knew what we were going to say, and guess what we went over in the kickoff? What kind of objections are you going to get? What are you going to hear? And then you're getting feedback from your agent. So how do you overcome that? Right? Talk, I talked about the agenda. You know what you're doing when you start the appointment. Same thing with Quantum Leap, guys. you got to know where you're going. Your phone session has a start and an end. It has an agenda. That's your agenda. 
Same thing with the agenda like you're going into a client. The agent's got to know this. They got to know how, how to react. Okay? That's, that was my biggest poke back. Once we implemented that, they had fun with it. Last question right here. In being honest with yourself, when you went through these changes, what's the biggest thing that you had to, what's the biggest challenge that you had with yourself? The biggest challenge, because I was a sales manager, and I gotta be honest, my favorite thing to do was close business. I loved it. That was my thing. I could close business. I was good at it, so I liked doing it. I was confident, right? So as a sales manager, when this rolled out, the biggest issue I had was staying with one agent. Because I was always, before, said, hey, get on every single close, every close that's out there. How many closes have you been on this week? That's what I've done. So what I do, I centered my whole world around getting, hopping from car to car to get on appointments. Stuff cancels. My day's all jacked up. What do I do? But i got to be honest with you. You want to develop an agent. You really want to develop. Because you know what? We bring them in. They sell their personal market. And they do all this. And you know, you're telling them good job. And yet they never learn how to do the job. And they leave in six months. To really affect it, an agent, if you got a day plan with an agent, and you got your four appointments, and you had your contingency plans, Rod, how many times did I, when he, he was my coach actually, uh, when I was in Ashland as a sales manager, but how did my contingency plans work out? Is Rod in here? He already gone. No, we had contingency plans set up. So guess what? If this appointment canceled, this is what we're going to do. And, they, and I did it all day long because what happens? You have an agent that says, hey boss, I got four appointments, man. They're really going to be good. I got my 16 and 4 for next week. I'll see you Monday. You're with me Monday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he comes to you Monday morning and says, God, all four appointments canceled. So, so what do you do? You jump over and you close business with somebody else, but what do they do? Go home. They go home, and they fail, and we let them do it. Stick with them. Say, that's fine. That's fantastic, because I love prospecting. Here's our contingency plans. <laughs> I mean, that, uh, thank you. Hey. We're going to take a break, but before we do, Jared, you'll come back and help us on this uh, TPS? Correct. You'll yeah. do that? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do this. Gene, is he allowed to do that? <laughs> Dan, is he allowed to do that? Okay. We're still on time. Okay. But while, while I was back there, while I was back there, one of, the, uh, one of the DSMs said, I'd like to get this fact finder approved. It's one of my favorite ones, and I thought I would just bring it up here. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, this is denied, <laughs> and we're going to uh, we're going to take a ten-minute break starting right now. Ten-minute break. Awesome. Awesome. Good? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, go ahead and flip your thing off. Uh, yes. The, uh, and, and you'll find this out in your, in your breakout books and that type of thing, that literally, if you have somebody that's under the production model, there are certain assumptions that they've already, you've already figured this out, so we're not gonna dig into this. You've already figured this out, we're not gonna dig into that. The details of that, you'll review in your breakout and in your, in your installation, okay? Matt, did I say everything right? Okay, other questions? Well, then what I'd like to do is break Jared back up, and he's going to get you into the details of the targeted prospecting system if you would make him welcome one more time. Thank you. Um, yeah, you guys actually had a lot of easier than what we had. See, I was in wave one, and when they put the... Uh, uh, they put it up the facts and figures that they figured out about the company, and they, they put that they, you know we're a we're a marketing and sales force, and we are spending 14 percent of our time selling and prospecting. You guys had a lot easier. Gene hit me in the back of the head. I didn't even know what was coming, so it was a lot worse. You know, you guys have actually been able to embrace this, and they've come off of it a little bit. What we're going to do is is that turned on? Thanks. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over the benefits of a targeting, a, a targeted prospecting system. Now, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? In the back, can you hear me okay? No? 